When your phone runs out of battery, how long will you last? This is a global blackout. It's a two-year blackout. There's a food shortage. A bottle of water costs 2,500 yen. Luxury cars have been turned into scrap metal. Traffic is paralyzed. Humans are fleeing en masse. Thousands of kilometers by bicycle. The main characters are an ordinary family in Japan. The four of them are strangers to each other. They seldom communicate with each other. That morning, John wakes up to find his alarm clock broken. Anna was also throwing out food that had gone bad in the fridge. It turned out to be a power cut. John and his children panicked and left the house. The lift was dead. They had to take the stairs. When they arrived at the metro station, John realized that the trams were also out of order. They had to walk to the company building, but the doors wouldn't open. There was no way out. They had to break the glass door. They arrived at the office, but they found that the lights didn't work and the computers wouldn't turn on. The leader had to call it an early night. Jack was on his way to school. He found all the cars parked by the side of the road. He became the envy of others on his bike. On the other hand, Ruth came to school. The power was cut off. She had to study. The students were happy to dance. Anna went downstairs and found out from her neighbors. All the buildings in the neighborhood are without power. It seems to be a massive blackout. He went to the supermarket and purchased some morning equipment and food. At the checkout, the cashiers at the supermarket were using abacuses, and they only accept cash. In the evening, the family had a candlelit dinner around the candles. Jack wanted to go to the loo, but the water had stopped running. For three days, people waited for water and electricity. The house was already in chaos. John's company has closed its doors for the time being. The boss is evacuating with his family. By this time, John was already feeling uneasy. He went to the bank to withdraw some money, but the bank was already surrounded by people. John, like a fool, not only didn't get any money, he was beaten up. Seven days later, the streets of the city were deserted. The shopping centers had been looted. Schools were closed. The water and electricity had been cut off for days. People began to evacuate. A family of four decided to leave the city. John was going to join John in Kagoshima. The family then set off on a journey of thousands of kilometers. On the way, a water merchant sells mineral water for 1,000 yen a bottle. John couldn't help but curse the merchants, but they didn't get very far. Along the way, the price of mineral water went from 2,000 yen to 2,500 yen a bottle. That's when Anna showed her skills. He talked his way down to 600 yen and bought all the water. But food began to run out. People began to fish for ornamental fish in the lake. The public toilets stank because of the lack of water. They had to urinate and defecate in the greenery. When the family arrived at the airport, the place was already surrounded by people. But the airport management informed them that the planes were also grounded. People were desperate. Slowly, riots began to break out. It's a global Global blackout. It's like Armageddon. All electronics are down. There's not much water or food left. A family of four decided to take their bikes to escape the disaster at John's house. On the way, they came across a food shop. There was a bike outside. John wanted to buy it. Instead, he found a rich man in the shop. He took off his Rolex. The boss's wife said, What's the point of giving me this? You can't eat it. So he took out the keys to a Maserati. The boss's wife was very impatient and told him to get out. And said to the people outside, You can't exchange these useless things for food. Only water and food are accepted in exchange. These luxuries won't fuel your stomach. In the end, Anna exchanged a bottle of water and two bottles of wine for a bicycle and a bag of rice. They followed the map many times, but they couldn't find the right route. That's when Anna found a toll booth on the motorway. It was already closed. When they got on the motorway, they were shocked. The road was full of people fleeing. The family rode on with strength. They finally reached the service area, but it had become a refugee camp. At night, the family slept in simple sleeping bags, but they found someone stealing water. Jack immediately chased after them, but they found out that the thief was trying to make milk powder for their children. It's a poor thing, isn't it? Jack had to turn around and leave. The next day, they came to a tunnel. They met a group of blind robbers. The old lady had to give up a bottle of water. The blind men let them through the dark tunnel. Time passed slowly. Day 16 of the blackout. Food is running out, and the water was running out. John ignored his family's objections. John took a drink from the river. After drinking it, he praised it as delicious. The weather was unpredictable. They soon encountered bad weather. The family rushed under a bridge to get out of the rain. They watched as their car and luggage were blown away by the wind. But there was nothing to be done. Just then, John suddenly stood up. Without a word, he rushed into the grass. The family was still puzzled. They were puzzled, but he squatted down, so he drained water from the river and got diarrhea. After the rain, Jack's car tire broke. John looked at the spilled rice. He wanted to pick it up, but he couldn't hold back his frustration. He collapsed on the ground. Jack and Ruth found a supermarket nearby, but the people inside had already left. There was a lot of stuff, but there was nothing to eat. Luckily, 
Jack found some food to fix his bike, Ruth found some tin cat food, and a couple of bottles of glass water and a flare. When she came back, she saw John building a fire, and Jack threw the flare he'd just found. Jack used a mobile phone case to patch up the tire. Then the family was back on the road. By the 22nd day, the family had become accustomed to eating tin cat food and drinking glass of water. On the way, they met a family of cyclists, but they had a tent, they had food and drink, they were very happy. It's the same family of four, but there's a big difference, they could only describe themselves as a mess. The self-respecting John saw this scene. John, a self-respecting man, saw this and tore the wrapper off the can of cat food. The men on the other side told them they could go to the nearby mountains to look for water. The wild vegetables on the roadside are also edible. He even took a picture of them with a mechanical camera. Finally, the four of them arrived in Osaka, but it was even more desolate. The children couldn't take it anymore. They begin to blame John. The news of the global blackout left the family in despair. They had no choice but to continue on to their father-in-law's house. There was a smell. There was a seafood restaurant up ahead. Lobster, king crab, all kinds of seafood. They looked up and saw it was actually an aquarium. They rushed to queue up, but when it was their turn, the food was all gone. On the 67th day of the blackout, they've run out of food. John caught a bug. He was about to eat it, and then a pig squeal woke them all up. It took a lot of effort. They were able to catch the pig, but before they could kill it, the pig's owner came to them. He was the owner of the pig farm. The owner told them the door of the pig farm was broken. All the pigs had escaped. Then the family came to the owner's house. They drank water from the well in the courtyard. Then the boss treated them to a full meal. While eating the pork, Ruth shed tears. To repay the boss, the family helped with the work, and they helped to find the rest of the pigs before they left. The boss gave them a lot of pork. They were getting closer to John's house. It's getting closer and closer. There was hope, but a river blocked their way. A teacher would take at least three days. Fortunately, the river is not very wide. The family made a simple raft. They got their wife and daughter across first. John and Jack came back for the bikes. But just then, the sky suddenly started to rain. The water level started to rise. The current was so strong that it broke the raft, and John was crushed by his bike and disappeared before the eyes of his family. After the rain, Jack only found John's wig. The three of them were devastated. They could only continue along the railway track. The smell of meat in the backpack. The smell of meat in the backpack attracted a pack of wild dogs. In a moment of crisis, there was a whistle from the woods. It was a coal burning train. The three men were eventually rescued. But John was gone. The three cried again. But little did they know, their John had luckily washed up on the shore. After waking up, John dragged his injured body forward. While he was resting, he saw a passing train. He lit the flare that Jack had given him. Luckily, Anna found it. John was eventually rescued. The family that had been separated from each other were finally reunited. On the 108th day of the blackout, they finally reached John's fishing village. Two years later, John and Jack learned to fish. Ruth learned to spin. Anna learned to grow vegetables. Life was good. That morning, John was suddenly awakened by an alarm clock. Then the radio went off outside. Everyone ran out, and they looked down. The lights were on in all the homes. The two-year blackout was finally over. Order was restored to the city. Excuse me, how long can you live without electricity? 